And hello again. Welcome to the November episode of Let's Talk Miamisburg. 2020 is almost over, folks. Glad to have you with us. I'm your host, Gary Giles. I'm the city's public information officer. This is a get to know you episode. Here's what we have in store for you over the next 30 minutes. A little later in the program, you'll meet new Parks and Recreation Director Ryan Davis, and we'll also welcome for the first time Parks and Facilities Superintendent Kevin McKinney. Ryan and Kevin will tell us how recreation is shaping up over the next few months in Miamisburg, and you'll want to be sure and stay tuned for that discussion. First up, though, another introduction. In our first segment, I'm pleased to welcome the new superintendent of Miamisburg City Schools, Dr. Laura Blessing. And before we get acquainted with Dr. Blessing, viewers should be aware that our episode here in November is pre-recorded. As a result, we will be unable to accept questions over the phone. We will, however, be providing you with contact information if you'd like to follow up on any of our topics. Dr. Laura Blessing, hello, welcome to the program and a belated welcome to Miamisburg. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. Uh, when did you officially start your duties as superintendent? August 1st. August 1st. I hope things are going well so far. They are. It has been an interesting <laughs> couple of months. Well, it's your first time with us, so let's tell the viewers a little bit about your professional background. Sure, I am from Indiana, okay. so I have spent the last 24 years in education in Indiana, graduate of Indiana University, so I know a lot of folks are Ohio State fans. It's, it's a tough <laughs> transition for a Hoosier. So. That's okay. It's not Michigan. <laughs> it looks like uh, we're going to be in a battle for the Big Ten, so that's kind of I exciting. Think so. So. I think so. So uh, undergraduate at Indiana University in elementary education, uh -huh. um, taught elementary education for about eight years. Then uh, went back and got my master's in education administration. Was a middle school assistant principal mm -hmm. for a year. And then uh, my hometown asked me to come back and be a K to eight principal. So I was in my hometown of Brookville, Indiana for eight years as a K to eight principal. And then I moved to central office position where I was a curriculum director, technology director. And then within about 15 months, they asked me to be the superintendent. So I was the superintendent in Fountain City, Indiana, mm -hmm. Northeastern Wayne Schools for the past seven years. Is that where you went to high school? No, I went to high school at Franklin County okay. in Brookville, Indiana, where I was a principal. Okay. So that well, was enjoyable. Glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, interesting time to start a new job, wouldn't you say? Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Um, the educational process at all levels, across the state, across the nation, has been upended by COVID-19 in many ways. Let's talk about the latest change at Miamisburg, and that's taking place at the high school building. Correct. Uh, starting yesterday, well, this was our first hybrid day today. Um, for those viewers that might not understand hybrid uh -huh. um, or a blended learning model, I'm kind of thinking about like a car. Um, you know, there are some hybrid cars that run on fuel, but then also on electric power. So our hybrid model at the high school is going to be part of the students will be at school um, every other day. And then the other part, the learning will take place at home uh, with the help of Google Classroom, maybe mm -hmm. some Zoom meetings, maybe some independent work assignments. And then on Mondays, everyone is home and the teachers um, have day morning check-ins, afternoon check-ins, each schedule will look a little different. Um, the purpose of hybrid is to create maximum space and distancing. Um, if some of you tuned in to uh, Governor DeWine yesterday and our health officials, they talk about the importance of masks. Our students have done a fantastic job wearing masks. We have sure. not had any issues. Um, but when you have 25 students in a room that could be 17 and 18 years old, um, space for those big students, it mm -hmm. does get difficult to sure. keep that spacing. So um, we have, we follow the health guidelines and with some of those um, cases we've had with positive cases, we've had students that have not been able to keep that six foot distance for a minimum of 15 minutes. So we're gonna be trying the hybrid model just for a few weeks. We'll be collecting data from now until Thanksgiving. We have the week of Thanksgiving, we have classes Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And then our vacation that week is Wednesday through Friday. So we'll collect data over the next 12 days for that. And then we'd like to continue hybrid for the weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas for another 15 days of data, just to see if our quarantine numbers can go down. So you're gonna reevaluate in December and Absolutely. decide what happens after the holidays. Yes. Has the high school been full-time in building, in class, since the beginning of the school year? Yes. And does that go for all the elementaries as well and the other buildings? Correct, our elementaries, middle school, preschool, okay. uh, have all been in session every day since September 8th. 
and they are continuing every day in class, right? That is correct. Okay. You know, the whole, the whole situation just requires so much flexibility for everybody, the families, the students, the teachers. Flexibility has been the key, hasn't it? Yes, it has. The patience, the understanding, um, we, we, the frustrations, we all have them, but I just feel like the flexibility and the patience that our community has provided us has been wonderful. Much difference between what's taking place in Ohio and what was taking place in Indiana before you left there? No, same okay. in terms of COVID. Every, I mean, the, yeah. it doesn't matter. I don't know. I mean, my husband still teaches. He's an educator at the high school and he's still at the high school and in, in, in Indiana school. And they, they, have the same, they have the same struggles. I think we all do across the nation. And the precautions that school districts uh, have taken, much like businesses or government buildings, public facilities, anything like that, the focus has always been, we want to keep our, our clients, our customers safe, in your, in your case, the students and well, but also you have to think of the teachers, the people that go to work there every day. Correct, yes. So I think that that balance of, you know, making sure that our students can follow the guidelines, they can stay as far apart as they can, the hand washing, but then also um, the safety of our staff because we know that young, young children aren't as susceptible to uh, the disease as our staff. So mm -hmm. we, we take um, extra precautions with our cleaning, um, with um, you know, just the guidelines that we ask our students to follow um, throughout the day for extracurricular events. And we feel like we've been doing a really good job, but we know it's because everyone has just been so cooperative and patient and sure. flexible, as sure. you said. You're watching Let's Talk Miamisburg, a production of the Miami Valley Communications Council. We're speaking with Dr. Laura Blessing. She's the superintendent of schools for the Miamisburg City School District. Uh, students uh, who learn from home, you always have the issue of technology for the students, whether they have a device, whether they have the internet connection. What kind of um, obstacle has that been in Miamisburg? Sure, well, we have some students who are online all full time. Mm -hmm. When school started in September, we provided families the option of um, full-time online learning at home. And for those students, if they did not have a device or even internet, mm -hmm. we were able to provide them um, some type of device, a Chromebook, and, and in some cases, even some hotspots that we were in cooperation with um, the Montgomery County ESC and we were able to, to obtain some Wi-Fi hotspots for families. So they've been able to continue their learning at home full time with those devices. For our hybrid learners at the high school starting today, uh, again, if, if a family needed some type of technology on those days that they're learning at home, they're working with their high school principal, Mr. Black, and his staff to get that worked out. Sure, um, you know, it was a, it was a, as we look back on the fall, it was a surprise to many, pleasant surprise, that athletics were allowed to continue uh, across the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, is the word right now as we sit here that winter sports will proceed as well? Correct, uh, we have plans already for, for basketball. We, okay. Our first basketball game is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, a okay. home event. Well, there are guidelines and there sure. are um, limitations. Aren't there always? Yes, so uh, I think we can only have 300 um, capacity in our sure. gym. So um, in terms of our pet band, they are not able to come and play because of the concerns with COVID. And so there are guidelines for our winter sports, but all of them are able to proceed mm -hmm. um, just different than in the past. And looking ahead again, everything is so ever-changing, of course, and we talked about the flexibility as we sit here today what are your thoughts or, or expectations maybe about how that second semester is gonna shape it for the school year? Sure, well, I mean, there, there's talk of vaccinations. Sure. So, um, you know, that could change mm -hmm. a lot of the um, health guidelines that we have to follow. We've provided our families the option of when second semester starts. Mm -hmm. Because we started late, um, the second semester doesn't start till officially February 1st. So that still gives us another eight weeks of our current first semester programming. Mm -hmm. We um, will be given families who are currently online the option to return. So if we have a large amount of students, maybe because um, there is a vaccine or guidelines change, we could have an influx of a lot more students than we have now. Mm -hmm. um, or if things get worse, we have the opportunity, students can choose to go online second semester if they want to. So for us to look ahead, we're hoping that it's the guidelines um, loosen up a little bit so that we can have 
some normalcy if we if that's ever possible and to continue with um, our after school programming because of with the hybrid model at the high school we al we allow sports and any of those events but a lot of our clubs and um, extracurriculars in that area we can't have right mm -hmm. now just because we are trying to limit um, the, the social interactions and we do have graduation planned um, so we're, we're planning to do it I think on the football field like we did last spring instead of an inside of an auditorium at Wright State right. so I think some new traditions are coming from the changes for COVID which some of them are, are new and exciting and so we, we look at the positives sure. of what, what is to come, but there's still a lot of unknowns. We all try. <laughs> um, Definitely. The virus has caused significant impacts in all areas of life for many people financially. How is it affecting Miamisburg City Schools budget? Sure, good, great question. Um, again, a very, a very unknown topic um, because with the amount of how the COVID economy has kind of impacted um, our you know funds throughout the state mm -hmm. so that we we know that the governor is looking at cuts um, at least six percent it's even predicted ten so um, as a Miamisburg community uh, November 2021 we could have a levy on the ballot um, we haven't asked for new money since 2010 our, our, our uh, excuse me, our uh, levies have been very successful in Miamisburg from my um, study of the history of that. So I, I want our viewers to know that if the state cuts our budget, we may be asking our community to help support and continue the great programming that what we have sure. because we could very well be looking at some financial troubles with the impact of COVID. In spite of all these unique challenges that school districts are facing and uh, including Miamisburg, students continue to achieve at a high level and i know that's something you're very proud of absolutely um, i always like to to include in meeting students first i think that because that's what we're here for uh, we had national honor society induction last thursday so i think for that that's a normal thing that schools and and students and parents look forward to so and of course we've had some great um, sport, uh, fall events in terms of the band was able to take part in some competitions and a lot of our fall athletes were able to enter into the competition season and excel in advance. Um, we don't have anybody in, um, we're, we're done, uh, finished with fall sports, but we did have some teams that made it through some of the um, uh, fall uh, tournaments in advance. So we're, we're excited that our students were able to have those opportunities. It's been a test of resiliency for everybody, for students and teachers. Absolutely, yeah. and we appreciate the parents' support and the community support through all of that as well. You mentioned your husband. I didn't ask you about the rest of your family, but I know you've got uh, other family members as well. Sure, sure, thank you. I have two daughters, uh, both in college. One is about to graduate from Indiana University, so that'll be an interesting virtual graduation ceremony <laughs> in next month in December. Okay. It's hard to believe it's December when it's so nice out today. Yeah, I know. And I then know. I have a sophomore, a daughter who's a sophomore in college as well. So she lives here with us in Miamisburg and has enjoyed the, the move and the transition. Okay, well, it's so nice to meet you and to have you join us here on the program. If anybody at home would have any questions that they want to follow up with, how can they contact the, the district and get those questions answered? Sure. I mean, obviously, um, you know, 937-866-3381. Call okay. my office um, and they'll, they'll get you to whatever department you want, miamisburgcityschools.org. Uh, that website has a lot of our return to school information, mm -hmm. a lot of our hybrid information that we discussed briefly today, and then any other changes that will be upcoming or for athletics or sports or any questions they have could have answered. There's a lot of FAQs out there for them. Well, good luck as the school year unfolds and you finish things out in year number one and uh, look forward to maybe having you back for an update down the road. Sounds great, I would, I would love that. Okay, so. Dr. Laura Blessing, Superintendent of Schools for the Miamisburg City School District, joining us here on Let's Talk Miamisburg. We're gonna take a 60 second break. When we return, we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna talk about parks and recreation programming in the city of Miamisburg. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the show. I'm Gary Giles. Glad to have you with us. A reminder, this is our November episode and we are not live, so no opportunity to call in with any questions that you might have, but we are going to give you some more contact information at the conclusion of this segment if you'd like to follow up. Joining me here in the second segment is the new Parks and Recreation Director for the City of Miamisburg. That would be Ryan Davis in the center of your screen. And on the far right of your screen is Parks and Facilities Superintendent Kevin McKinney. And he also is joining us here for the very first time. Hello and welcome, Ryan and Kevin. Glad to have you with us. Thanks, Gary. I'm glad to be here. Uh, congrats on your appointment Thanks as Parks much. and Recreation Director in Miamisburg. It's a little bit of a homecoming for you. Absolutely. Why don't you, um, for the viewer who may not be familiar with you, give us a little bit of uh, career, that career path, how it, how it unfolded. Yeah, so actually my first job was working in, for the city of Miamisburg. Sure. I was an attendant at the pool back in, I think it was 1999 is when I started. Um, you know, just working seasonally and loved every minute of it. Grew up, went to school um, to be a high school math teacher actually. And then after college, it just kind of confluence of events, got a job full time with the city of Miamisburg, managing the pool and running our facility maintenance division. Did that for a while and then I did the parks and facilities role for three or four years and then spent the last five years with the city of Kettering mm -hmm. as their business administrator. And then when the opportunity came up uh, to become the director here, I jumped at the opportunity come home and have a chance to influence this great department and this great community. So I'm really looking forward to it. How much of that math did you retain, that math training? I got every bit of it. Okay. Well, so you're good with the budget. Bring it on. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> How about you, Kevin? You've not been with Miamisburg all that long. Tell us about that and what you uh, did prior to that. Yeah. Um, so I've been with Miamisburg about 14 months and it's a, uh, an amazing community. Love being here. Uh, before that, I held similar positions with the City of Lebanon and the City of Dayton. And I've been uh, within local government for about 22 years in the parks and rec field for roughly about 20 years of that. Mm -hmm. um, have a background in plant science, uh, and this is where I'm at today. Well, we're glad to have you. Thanks. We talked with uh, Dr. Blessing about the impacts of coronavirus on school districts in our first segment. Well, I'm not sure there's another area of the operation with local governments, I know in Miamisburg, that was more affected in 2020 by restrictions than parks and recreation. Uh, so it's an interesting time for you to jump into a Absolutely new job yeah. as well. How have things been affected this year? How has your department navigated all of the roadblocks? You know, we have more things that are not affected by COVID or less things. So, you know, less we things. less things. The pool had to be closed for the season. Mm -hmm. We weren't able to offer day camps. The community center has been closed for quite a while. All of the staples that our community is used to, our, our events, our concert series, all the things that bring the community together, uh, we weren't able to do those this year because of COVID, um, which is unfortunate. Um, it's been a real learning opportunity for everybody, I think. It, it helped us kind of reflect on what's important. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so we saw a lot of closures, but we also saw a lot of growth in our parks. Um, a lot more people using the parks this summer and that kind of thing. So there's good and bad, um, as Dr. Blessing alluded to as well. So the playgrounds, the city, the neighborhood parks, they remained open at first with some restrictions, right? right? But that's, that's just about it. Yeah, so at the moment, um, so playgrounds are open, parks are open, but mm -hmm. things like restrooms are still closed. Sure. Um, the, the guidelines change based on the sector of the operation that we run. So our community center is open now, but it's limited capacity. Mm -hmm. um, our program is very, programming is very limited. So any programs that we do have to have a certain number of people. Um, they have to be spaced, of course. They have to wear masks. So everything that we do is affected by this. Did you, did you venture into the virtual programming area at all? We did a little bit of virtual programming. Okay. Um, what we've seen across the state and across the country is that it, it, it helps sometimes, mm -hmm. um, but it can't be a direct replacement. So it's, right. it's a cost benefit type conversation. Well, I know the community really missed a lot of those things yeah. this year and, and everybody's keeping their fingers crossed that 2021 is a, is a whole nother matter. Absolutely, and we're, we're looking forward to 2021. At the moment right now, we are still planning to have a normal 2021 or back to normal. Sure. We're starting to talk about what events we might do, what that could look like, how they might still be different. Mm -hmm. um, planning to open the aquatic center, assuming things get better by then. Um, so we're hopeful that 2021 can turn around. Kevin, the federal government has provided funding to communities across the nation to assist with COVID-related expenses. Big help. Yeah. The city of Miamisburg received over $1 million in CARES funding, and the two of you are leading some, uh, some projects that are getting underway in city facilities. 
Give us some examples of the work that's being done currently in the next month or two. Yeah, sure. Um, currently we have four major projects going on um, utilizing CARES funding. The first project that is actual, uh, actually underway is a ionization air purification system that we will be attaching to our HVAC systems and our facilities to clean the air and then take that air and return it back and dump everything into the filtering system. The second project that we are in the process of, of putting out there is touchless fixtures. So that would be everything dealing with plumbing and restrooms, drinking fountains, sinks, and just creating that touchless experience, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Less contact. And then we also have a keyless entry system that we're working on in, all, in the public buildings that allows us to manage the door access and the ability to have the doors open, closed at certain times. We're also installing foot pools on those doors to help with citizens, staff coming into our facilities to be able to totally be touchless mm -hmm. on our door fixtures. And then the third project is a, um, it relates to the heating and uh, air system also is a control system that will help manage our HVAC systems so we can make sure that they're running properly, getting our proper airflow through our, uh, through our uh, facilities, which will also in turn help with the air purification system that we're installing. Are we talking about every building that the public has access to, or are we talking about every building that the yeah. city owns? How, how, what's the scope? So yeah, so the, the initial scope, our, our main facility that is most public is the Civic Center. Right. It houses a lot of uh, public access, and but we're focusing on the eight most public buildings that we have. Okay. So we're looking at the Civic Center, this Civic Center Annex, um, where engineering uh, economic development is housed. Mm -hmm. and we're looking at the community center, both golf course clubhouses. We're also looking at a community center annex and other recreation facilities that we know public is going to be in. Um, to just really try to limit kind of what we can do and help stop, you know, infection or spread of pretty much all things going into the winter months here. So visitors to these buildings will soon begin seeing this yes. work taking place, correct? Correct. About when, would you say? So uh, the work should be happening within the next couple weeks started. Okay. And then hopefully finishing up before the uh, first of the year. So we've got those projects that are related to uh, COVID-19, but there are other projects taking place this winter with facilities, um, with parks and recreation. Ryan, I'm gonna come back to you. Let's talk about the aquatic center that you yeah. mentioned that never opened to the public this right. year. What's happening up there? So this marks the, this, this year would have been the 23rd season that the facility would have been open in its current location. Next mm -hmm. year will be year 24. Um, and so anything that has that much life behind it requires a little bit of upkeep. So in the 2020 capital budget, we've allocated some money to do some really infrastructure investments into the facility. Okay. So the first of the projects will be the gutter system. So everyone might be familiar with the coping stone that's around the pool. You can see the water let's, kind of flow over the edge of that. Yeah, let's put a picture of that coping, those coping stones up on the, so you can uh, refer to that. So the water in the pool kind of flows over those and flows through them into the gutter system. Those, uh, you know, age differently over time. They're made of concrete, and so some of them last longer than others. You can kind of see where we've patched them over the years. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is a full wholesale replacement of those. All of them are coming out, and we're reinstalling a stainless steel gutter system that has some um, uh, plastic netting or um, plastic grating in it. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll still have the zero depth, you know, uh, entry. We'll still have the water flowing over the edge of it. So we'll look and feel. It will feel the way that it always does but it'll have a brand new look to it, which will help with maintenance and long-term uh, uh, care of the facility. Okay, so that's one aspect. Let's go to the second aspect, which is the wall and surface of the, of the pool itself. Right, so again, 24 years of wear and tear on the, on the surface of the pool. Um, so what we're doing is we're gonna do a wholesale top to bottom, front and back side of the pool. We're doing a, an eco finish, which is a thermoplastic liner system. So the entire s uh, surface will be coated with this system uh, we're doing a, a two-color system. We're going to take all the ceramic tiles out and install this throughout the, the pool shell. 
or those are good investments in that facility that I'm sure the expectation is will last years and years. Yes, absolutely. We're looking to get a long life out of this. And uh, that's, that work's starting soon. The right? work's starting soon, and we will have those finished before next season. Another project, Kevin, taking place at Pipestone, Pipe, the city's Pipestone Golf Course on Benner Road. Tell us what's happening up there. Uh, we're getting ready to um, start a project to build two outdoor restroom facilities on the course. Okay. One uh, restroom facility will be on the front nine in between holes four and five. The second facility will be on the back nine between holes 14 and 15. Okay, let's put that next graphic on the screen and you can uh, help, help the viewer yep. uh, understand where that's, where that's going. Yeah, so uh, the goal is to have on-course restrooms. Mm -hmm. This will be flushing toilets, running water. These things will be powered by solar panels and be able to just be a nice addition and amenity to the course. It will offer two stalls, men's and women's, mm -hmm. and then obviously an operating closet in the back. These facilities were really looked upon, you know, how, how, what do they look like? What's the design of it look like? So we're going with something that's uh, eye-pleasing, right? Metal roofing, colored, mm -hmm. stone facades, um, decorative clapboarding, some uh, decorative trussing. So just really trying to kind of bring the overall experience of golfing at Pipestone just kind of to another level. Be ready for next spring? They should be ready for uh, late spring. Late spring, okay, yeah. terrific. Ryan, we don't have uh, much time left, but I want to look ahead uh, to the holiday season. Yep. It's always a busy time for recreational activities. It looks a little different this year, but there are a few things that people can get involved in. Correct. So normally we would be here announcing, you know, the community holiday celebration, come downtown for a big parade and a big get together. So obviously in COVID-19 times, that's not something that we can do. Um, but however, we did feel like the holidays were a time where we could create a real atmosphere downtown, a real environment. So we're still doing all the lighting that we're used to. We're actually enhancing the Riverfront Park lighting experience so that people can come and enjoy on their own, not gathering together, but really the whole season is a great place to be downtown. So we're, at, we're adding some speakers downtown, so we'll have uh, festive music playing while the lights are on, so it'll just be a real nice time. Um, in addition to that, we are doing some of the programming that people are used to, so we'll have Sundays with Santa, so a time where you can come together, do a candy cane hunt, and have that experience with Santa, socially distanced, of course, mm -hmm. but it'll still be there for the community. So. Okay, if anybody wants to follow up and get some details on those type of things, where can they go? PlayMyAmusburg.com is the best place with the most dynamic, up-to-date information. Okay, and let's also give the main departmental phone number if anybody wants to follow up on any of the topics sure. we talked about. 937-866-8999 is the best number to reach us. Okay, well, thank you both so much for being here. Thank, thank you. Appreciate nice. your time. Look forward to catching up with you down the road. Great. Parks and Recreation Director Ryan Davis and Parks and Facilities Superintendent Kevin McKinney. We want to thank you for watching. We'll remind you that uh, our next episode is coming up on January the 13th at 7 p.m. I hope you'll make a point of joining us then. We hope you have a great end of 2020 and a great holiday season. We appreciate you watching throughout the year. I'm Gary Giles. Thanks to everyone here at MVCC also for all their hard work. We'll see you next year. So long, everybody.